Hi everybody, welcome back to Rust on console on my G Portal community server. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your community server for quite a cool starting loadout. So this might be for a PVE server where you and some friends, or you know, you could even set it up so the public, so when they spawn in, um, they can't shoot each other, but they do spawn in with a lot of well, the basic for building stuff. So the hammer and the um, building plan um, but also we've got them spawning in as a new player with weapons as well so you can have a bit of fun so if you forgot the pve bit you could have a nice pve server where people are kind of avoiding some of that first grind i mean you've still got to go and gather res resources and things like that but you've got kind of a a bit of a jump um a bit of a um a step up before you get started so that you can then you know start enjoying either pve and exploring and building stuff or maybe even pvp in fact let me let me kill and respawn just to show you so if i respawn uh random here we go you'll see so our inventory is full um so let's have a look at our inventory as you can see <laughs> we've got we've got a sniper we've got um, a shotgun. We've got shotgun shells. We've got. I think we've got. So we've got sniper shells. What are these? Pistol bullets. Um, we've got various scopes. We've got the rock, obviously. We've got the building hammer. And we've got stuff like that, this. And our character has got some uh, some cool clothes on as well. So how do we set up our server like this? So let's come out of here and let's go over to our. Um, G Portal Rust Console Edition server um, control panel, and you'll want to click on Basic Settings. And let's. What I'll do is I'm just going to scroll through my settings, and you can copy them. Maybe you'll pause the video and, and come back. And obviously, you don't have to copy these settings exactly. You can you can make changes to make it the way you want to. So you're probably going to want to have a password so that you and your friends can get on. Obviously, you've got crossplay on, um, and then if we come down. I've previously done mess, uh, videos on how to set yourself up as the owner and admins and things like that. Um, I'm using uh, preset 788. Let's get past this bit. Here we go. Get past this bit. Right, so stability is on, so buildings will fall down. Radiation is on, so uh, certain monuments and areas will be protected by radiation. Feel free to turn that on if you're having a PVE server where people are just exploring and getting to learn the game. And um, time is on. I've changed the day length to 120, so a couple of hours for a day, and the nights are only five minutes long. Um, again, if you've got more of a hardcore server, you could do that. Now, the NPCs, everything's toggled on. Um, apart from NPC ignore players, you'll probably want to toggle that off um, like so, if you've got a PvP server <coughs> and you want people to be able to, you know, have fights with the uh, NPCs, but this one I'm setting up kind of more of a um, PVE sort of setting. Uh, all the animal stuff is the same as it would be for default. It's not an immortal server now. PVE is turned on for this server, but again, if it was a PvP server or just a normal one, we would turn that off. I've got PVE turned on. So that when people, you know, people basically can't shoot each other. But if it's a PV, uh, P server for you, you know, turn that on. Haven't got infinite ammo, haven't got full start magazine. If you're going full PVP and you're really just creating a deathmatch server, that's something you could play around with and turn both of those on. I've put player maximum health <coughs> on starting up to 100. Again, to give players a little bit of a uh, start, a little bit of a help with their start, so they're not going to have to start scavenging for food straight away. I've left the maximum team size as 8. Again, if you were doing this on, say, I, in public, you may want to turn that down to, say, 2, and then limit the authorizations so that you can't, so you wouldn't end up with Zergs or, you know, big groups of players who could come in and could dominate a server. By keeping the max team size to 2, only 2 people can have locks, only 2 people can authorized building you can even turn that to one and just have it for like solos um, as is this is going to be a PV e server so that doesn't really matter no starting items and no but I've enabled builders paradise and enabled target practice uh, items now if you have both of these on there's too much stuff for the players inventory it doesn't you don't get everything from the target practice items but I think it's quite fun that you start with all that gear especially if a lot of the 
players are new, it gives them a chance to play around with this stuff, um, even though um, they might not be able to you know, craft it for quite a while. No free crafting, no instant crafting, no unlock or blueprints. If you're going for an easier sort of server, again for a PvE, you may want to turn those on if you wanted like a learning, more of a sandbox server. Um, workbench override, um, in fact that should be minus one, so we're not doing anything with that. And what I have done though is the gather scale and the loot scale I've turned up to two. So people should be able to... Um, uh, that when you chop down trees, for example, or, or you loot things, you'll get more resources out of trees and out of rocks and all this sort of thing, just to make things a little bit easier, make it a little bit more friendly. Disable item damage is off. Um, again, things you know, sh should get damaged. And the helicopter is turned on. The Bradley is turned on, so they are threats. Um, I did turn on the demolish hammer, because <laughs> with this, it makes it much easier if you make a mistake to correct it. When you're building stuff and i just think it's a nice quality of life no free upgrading no free construction but i mean you could change that should you want to um and then decay upkeep again i've turned that on so people have to make sure that they keep resources to stop their bases decaying um and that's it really um and by doing those really whether you go for pv E enabled or not that will give you kind of a PVE or a PVP uh, server but with those settings I think you'll find people will have a lot of fun because you're kind of avoiding that initial stage of having to you know get the, collect those bits um, so that you you know you have um, uh, you know then you've got to craft things like the uh, the, the, the plan um, and obviously having some weapons as well means that you're not going to get eaten by a bear or a wolf earlier on that way. So there we go. Obviously everything could be customised to however you like it. This one might be a little bit too easy. <laughs> but as you can see, using the interface, it really is fantastically easy in G-Portal. Um, and then you would save and then the server would restart. A final kind of tip I would give actually though is just remember that when you do restart your server, it can take quite a while for them to become available. Sort of 20 minutes sometimes so if you've restarted your server with the changes and yet it's not appearing you know you can't connect it wait a little bit longer maybe do another restart and again wait another sort of 20 minutes um, and then you can kind of start to you'll you'll see you'll be able to connect and you'll be able to crack on and enjoy your rust console community server anyway that's enough from me hopefully you found this useful if you have hit like want to see more the same press subscribe and i will of course see you again soon